Welcome back. Now we we'll talk more about giving back to the society, doing things that uplift the society. And now it's, um, we're going to be talking about the OIF, which is a registered non-governmental organization. OIF means Obi Ikenchuku Foundation. And we have in the studio the founder of OIF, Genevieve Ikechuku, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, so why and when was OIF founded? Why was OIF founded? OIF was founded because it's um, it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, it's in honor of the late Obi Ikenchuku of Agbo, um, that would be my father, and my mother, um, the late Grace Ikenchuku of Agbo. So that was really the main motivation for me, you know, having to do something in honor of um, my king, my late king, and giving back to my community, um, where I come from, and, and in general, um, to my people. Um, and then uh, OIF was registered in, in 2013, but many years before that, I knew I was going to be doing something um, in this in this light, and that and that's it really. So I was founded and, and registered in 2013. Okay, when you say giving back, what do you intend to give back? through this foundation? I give back myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm... Like the program. Be, be, yeah. Being an orphan, I just feel um, every orphan child um, everywhere, especially, like I say, where I come from here in Nigeria, every orphan child um, deserves um, to live a normal, unfulfilled life. Um, and I think that in most cases you find that you know, you get the complete opposite. They feel totally left out. They're not doing as well as other children. And um, so I feel the need to, to inspire often kids and let them know that you can actually be like any other child. You can be productive, you can be fulfilled, you can be happy and become whatever it is you want to become. You can be, uh, you know, uh, beneficial to your society. And so, um, my way of passing that message across to the orphan kids is to say, look at me, I'm an orphan as well. I've been orphaned all my life, basically. And um, here I am today, a solicitor, and I'm doing very okay, so you can do better. So that's my way, it's my message to all orphans um, in Nigeria, especially from where I come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you've, um, you're a legal practitioner. Uh -uh. You've, um, you've been practicing law in the UK. Yes. And now you, you're, you're coming back home to give back to your people, as you say. Talk us through what made you take this decision to leave your, I mean, your respected practice, a solicitor of the Supreme Court of England and mm -hmm. Wales, Family House of Lords. And uh, you, you, you recently got an appointment. I'm trying to get that. Within the Corporate mm -hmm. Services mm -hmm. Department of London Borough. Oh, no, I've Hunter. worked there for five years, mm -hmm. okay. um, so it's not but, recent. Okay, so okay, but then tell us what made you decide to leave this practice out there, successful practice, to come back to give back to you? That's a very good question because I've asked myself the same question over and over again. Um, I've worked with the London Borough of um, Hounslow for just over five years since 2009, and prior to then, I practiced obviously with other boroughs like uh, the London Borough of Southwark and in private practice as well. And about two years ago, I had a very interesting case. Um, I specialize in housing litigation, by the way, so I'm a specialist in that regard. Mm -hmm. And then I had a very interesting case um, within um, Hounslow. It's called the case of Yem Show versus the London Borough of Hounslow, and that was one of the matters that I had full conduct um, of. And um, it was a homelessness matter. And then one of the major issues within that case was domestic violence. And the question to my client was, why do we have to accommodate a woman who willingly left her own marriage and her home and comes to you to say, I want you to house me. I can no longer live with my husband. And um, my client had problems with that particular issue. And so um, for, for me, having dealt with the case of Yemshaw from inception to conclusion, it was a, this was a Supreme Court matter, by the way, having dealt with that case and seeing the the, the, the way in which domestic violence as a whole is viewed within the UK and outside the UK, it's, it, it's that case in particular broadened the definition of domestic violence and that brought it home to me. So I sat down one day and I'm thinking, 
okay, you're from Nigeria, you're from Delta State, you're from Agbo, you're here dealing with a matter that is now law, not just in the UK, but even within the EU. This is now the authority with regards to domestic violence within the housing context. And I'm thinking, why are you here developing an already developed country? Why don't you go back to where you come from, you know, and you're being referred to as developing or underdeveloped? And so um, besides the fact that I've lived all my life as an orphan and I've always wanted to give back, I didn't know how to go about it at the time. But once I dealt with the case of Yemsha, and I realized that there's so many people out there back home who need the likes of Genevieve and who needs, you know, qualified individuals. And we're all abroad. Most of us are abroad. And we're doing better out there. And I think, uh, you know, people like us should come back home to do better and to give back to our society. For me, it was the turning point two years ago, and I felt the need to come back to give back to my society. I felt the need to basically impact the lives of these particularly vulnerable people, the orphans and victims of domestic violence, especially underage abused girls. So that was really it for me. Yeah. That was the turning point for me. Yeah, and so yeah. the foundation focuses on the orphans and um, Victims issues. of violence. Okay, and violence. you're planning a OIF village. Tell us about yes. this. Again, that's a very interesting one for <laughs> me. Um, it's called the OIF village because, again, I feel the need to give back to my immediate community. Okay, so this is a village um, going to be built, hopefully, within Agbo, where I come from. Now, the OIF village is hoped to house individuals such as the orphans, obviously, um, and we call um, the orphanage, we call it the OIF residence within the OIF villages. So the OIF village is like a camp, it is a camp, okay, and we, we, we would have within it the orphanage which we call the OIF residence. Now within that village we also have what we call the Obi Kenchika Development Centre, which is meant to be a vocational centre. Now the idea behind the vocational centre is to be able to transfer children from the residence, that's the orphanage, at a certain period of their life, uh, from the age of 14, to be able to transfer them from there to the vocational centre. We're talking about children with specific talents and skills. Okay? And I say to people, not everyone wants to be a lawyer like you. Not everyone wants to be a doctor. There are children out there who are better off as, as farmers, mm. who are better off as tailors, who are better off as actors and actresses.